This is an example of calculating shear stress in a fluid with a more complicated velocity distribution. In chapter one, we calculated the shear stress between two plates. One plate was fixed and one plate was moving, and we got a linear distribution, and the calculation of the shear stresses on the surface was uh, quite straightforward. This one's just a little bit more complex. Uh, the problem reads, Consider steady, fully developed flow between two infinite parallel plates separated by a distance h. It can be shown that the velocity distribution is parabolic and given by this expression here. And indeed, I think in chapter 4 we're going to derive that. For steady laminar flow, you can show that the velocity distribution is parabolic. And the problem asks to find the magnitude of the shear stress at the top and bottom plates and on the center line. And so notice these plates are separated by distance h here, distance h, y is measured from this, this center line. And what's going to happen is uh, the flow in this case is being driven by some sort of pressure gradient, a pump. And fluid friction, viscosity is, a, is, is fluid friction, and it will uh, cause a shear stress and basically drag on both walls. So both walls will be will be uh, dragged downstream, and of course the fluid will be will be held back by the by the fluid friction. So we're after calculating the shear stress in the fluid at those surfaces due to viscosity, and. We learned in chapter one that the shear stress is the dynamic viscosity times, uh, this is the strain rate, which is also the local velocity gradient. So all we need to do is calculate the velocity gradient at the location of interest and multiply it by the dynamic viscosity. So let's start with the, the upper plate, which is at y equals h. Now, so we're going to get the shear stress at y equals h equals mu and then we take du dy y equals h. So it's going to be mu, and then the derivative of our velocity distribution here is going to be, of course, that's uh, basically the first term's a constant, and then so we're going to have u max times minus 2y upon h squared, right? Because h is a constant. And we're going to evaluate that at uh, y equals h. So we're going to get tau y equals h equals, so you're going to get minus 2 mu u max upon h. Let me just start a new page and scroll down. Now the problem asks for the absolute value of the shear stress. So I'm going to take the absolute value of that, and that's 2 mu u max upon h. And that's the answer if you like to I think part A. Okay, so now we consider the lower plate, so we're considering y equals minus h, and so tau at y equals minus h is going to equal mu du dy y equals minus h. The derivative, of course, is the same. So tau at y equals minus h is going to equal 
So now we substitute minus h into this expression, and of course you're going to get positive 2 mu u max upon h. Of course, that's the, so that's the shear stress at the bottom plate. On the center line, y equals 0, we can see that if we substitute in for the derivative, basically the, the derivative right, we're going to substitute y equals 0, we're going to get that du dy y equals 0 equals 0, so there's no shear stress on the center line. And if we scroll up and look at this, you can see that there's no gradient. We have a symmetry condition at the center line, du dy is 0, so there's no fluid shear stress on the center line. And so this is an example, that's the answer. This is an example of calculating uh, the shear stress in a fluid uh, for a more complex velocity distribution. In this case, the velocity distribution was obtained from an anal analytical solution of laminar flow between two parallel plates, which we're actually going to cover, I think, in Chapter 4. And that completes this problem.